everyone, it's Chronic Blaze here, and welcome back to another video. If you guys didn't know, I actually do really enjoy programming. So not so much text programming like Python or JavaScript, not text coding, but like block coding, like Scratch and this stuff. I actually enjoy that, and I actually don't do a whole lot of coding, but I will do it here and there. And recently, I decided to try and take on a project and recreate Rocket League in Scratch. And this was pretty difficult if i'm being honest i'm actually surprised that i was able to pull this off because yes i like coding but i'm not that good at it so i was surprised that i was able to pull this off um i'm not just seeing inside of someone else's I'm, i actually made this it's called bouncy ball car soccer and it's my attempt at porting rocket league into scratch now if you guys don't know there's already one big issue with this is that rocket league is a 3d game using unreal engine so unreal engine is good physics we kind of don't have that here. Yeah, the physics are decent. They're okay for Scratch. But, like, we don't really have the amount of physics that Unreal Engine would have in, available to us in Scratch. It's just because we're doing Scratch here. And the second major downside is that Scratch is in 3D. So there might be a way to actually code 3D Rocket League. But I had to improvise a lot. So if we full screen this here, there is a green flag. It's just cut off the screen. So I am playing the game right now. You'll see this first screen. It says Bouncy Ball Car Soccer. This is actually one of my favorite parts. So basically what I did is I took this image. I downloaded it. I cut out all the Psyonix branding and Rocket League branding and uploaded it into Scratch. There's still some Rocket League branding. Like on the far left side, you can see some. Like I have to polish it up. But this isn't even published anyways. So uh, 10 likes and I will publish this. So if we press space... So as you can see here, we actually have sound effects. So we have like a scoreboard sound effect and a goal sound effect too. And then it's these really just beautiful physics. Just look at this. So my favorite part of this game is that you can actually score from the side of the net. So you can literally just go like this. So the key with this game is it was meant to be bad. This wasn't meant to be something super good. Yeah, it's impressive that I can make this. Like I'm actually pretty... Surprised that I actually managed to make this, but it was kind of meant to be bad. So yeah, let's actually get into some of the physics here, how I actually managed to pull this off. I did have a lot of help with this game, like I wouldn't be able to do this on my own. Shout out to Super Creeper for helping me. When you, so when this screen shows here, this is my beautiful backdrop. So the cards actually disappear until this little go symbol shows here. Now, the thing is, like I said, I wanted this game to be bad. So, I didn't put that much effort into this backdrop. I drew a couple of lines and called it a day. This is actually... I like it because it just looks so bad. That's honestly why I like it. And then I have some standard blue goal, orange goal, blue wins, orange wins, click the green flag to play again. And of course, this one here. When this one receives the go message, this shows. There's also a bunch of messages that gets these numbers to show. Three, two, and one messages. So then when that happens, it'll broadcast go cars go. It'll show, wait one second, then hide. And then everything starts with go cars go. So as soon as the go cars go message goes, this orange car and the blue car and the ball will show. Now, I didn't have them show at the very beginning for the simple reason of you could actually play on this screen and you could actually score goals before the timer had started. So I thought, okay, it's just better to have those disappear and just show up later. So when the car receives go cars go, it'll show, it'll go to these coordinates right here. So you can see uh, in the picture, it'll go to the bottom left of the screen. And then, so here's the controls. If W is moved, so this is, if W is pressed, the really funny thing about this game is the cars can move up and down. So W, A, S, and D work just like you'd expect them. W actually goes up. Yeah, you could have used A and D. I've seen a lot of Scratch games like this. They'll use A and D to turn and then W to go forward. But I didn't want to do that. Remember, I wanted this to be bad, so I kind of like that you can actually move the car up. But the catch is C is boost, so you can only use C when going forward. So as you can see in the code here, if W is pressed, it'll change the Y by 10. S is pressed, change the Y by negative 10, and so on. The only difference is C changes the X by 15, so boost actually works. So the blue car is the exact same thing, so it'll go to the same coordinates, except the blue car is controlled using the arrow keys because it's a two-player game. I didn't know how to code AI into this game, and I'm not going to try because this was already hard on its own for me. I'm not a very good coder. Now, the main issue that I find with this game is Scratch has a lot of limitations when it comes to using different... It only lets you use the arrow keys, space, any key, A through Z, or 1 to 9. So what I actually wanted to bind boost to 
was left control, but I was unable to. I had to bind it to M. So one person has to play with two hands to use boost. Also, I like how when you're using boost and hitting the back arrow, you go incredibly slow. That I, I, The same thing happens with this one. You just go incredibly slow. Now, here's where things get interesting. It's in the balls code. I had a lot of help with this. So the ball goes to these coordinates here. If it's on edge, it will bounce. But I have to use variables for Y velocity and X velocity because if you notice here, when you actually hit the ball, the ball will slow down after a certain amount of time. So it'll like slow down. I know it went through the car. That wasn't supposed to happen. But it, the ball will actually slow down. So the way I made this work, so I did it if touching sprite 3 and then if the up arrow is pressed, it'll set the Y velocity to 17. This actually allows the ball to slow down. And then the same thing will happen with the down arrow. Set the Y velocity to negative 17. The only catch here is that when the left and right arrows are pressed, it's just the X velocity to negative 17 and 17. Now, when M is pressed, it sets the X velocity to 20. Now, I originally had all the keys as 20, but the problem with that is you can get a goal like this. And I kind of wanted to eliminate that strategy. So you can do that with boost, but it's a lot harder to. So I thought that would be probably best to take that out. So now you actually have to be using boost to do that. There is a limited boost in this game because I didn't actually know how to code in limited boost. And the same thing happens if it's touching the orange car where, you know, W, S, A, and D will be pressed. It'll change the Y velocity and the X velocity by 17 or negative 17, depending on the key. And if C is pressed, it will change the X velocity by 20. There is a difference here. It'll change it by negative 20 for M. And that's just because the cars are facing different ways. The way this all works is the Y is changed by the Y velocity and the X is changed by the X velocity. And the X velocity is constantly the X velocity multiplied by 0 0.9. Same with the Y velocity. Now here's where things get interesting. So I couldn't actually get the if on edge bounce to work. And I still have a bit of trouble with this. But if the absolute value of the X position is 225, if you don't know what absolute value is, absolute value is the opposite of the number. So if for this example, the absolute value of 225 is negative 225. So what this means is if the absolute value is 225 in all directions or negative 225 in all directions, the ball will bounce back. So you can kind of go up to it and kind of move it back. So I'm not entirely sure if this worked. Notice in some areas, it does definitely work better than others. It's the uh, Y I'm finding that it doesn't work as well. And then it sets the X velocity to negative one. Let's actually go to the goals first. So here's how stuff would go in the net. So if the ball is touching one of the nets, so that's sprite one and sprite four, I'm just going to use sprite one as an example. It's the same for both of them. It'll wait 0.1 seconds because I found that was more kind of fluid. Broadcast that and the victory sound, wait seven and a half seconds, then switch the backdrop back to backdrop six. Once that's done, the whole go cars go thing will actually happen again. So see when the backdrop switch, it'll broadcast, it'll hide these variables, except for the time, which I'll get into those variables later. It'll wait five seconds and then switch the backdrop back to backdrop one. Speaking of those variables, there were actually a lot of variables involved in making this. So the first one that I had a lot of help with from Super Creeper was the spacebar count, because you used to be able to press spacebar during this game and then reset the whole game. So what Super Creeper did, so when the space key is pressed, if the space key is pressed and spacebar count equals one, the backdrop is switched to backdrop one, obviously, and the spacebar count is set to zero. This means, because the key is space pressed, if the spacebar count is one, it'll press. If it's not one, it won't press. So this spacebar count cannot increase anymore after this. See, I'm like literally spamming the spacebar and it's not increasing. Next variable is the timer. This one was fairly easy. I did this one pretty much all on my own. Uh, just when it receives start timer, it'll repeat until the time is less than one, just in case it accidentally goes into the negatives. It'll wait one second, change the time by negative one. When the timer hits zero, it'll broadcast some other messages, but I'll get into that later. The next ones, uh, the, I already went over the X velocity and the Y velocity, blue score and orange score. Basically, when blue scores on the orange net, blue score adds one. Orange scores on the blue net, orange score adds one. That's basically how the scoreboard works. Now, here's where things get interesting. I had a lot of glitches that if a goal was scored at the very end of the game, there would be some very weird things, especially even in overtime. So if the ball, if it's touching Sprite 4 or Sprite 1, that's the Nets, and the time is less than 1, it'll wait 0 0.1 seconds, switch backdrop to backdrop 4, which is the victory backdrop. Then it'll broadcast the victory sound, wait 7.5 seconds, and switch backdrop to backdrop 6. It won't alter the scoreboard at all. 
Now, when I actually said the old ones, it was actually wrong. You just changed the orange curve by one, wait zero point one seconds, switch backdrop to backdrop three. That's how that one worked when you score and the time is not an overtime. Speaking of overtime, there is overtime in this game. So if the time is less than one and blue score is greater than orange score, it'll wait a second, switch the backdrop to backdrop four, broadcast the victory sound, and then it'll do the click reflex start again. Same thing will happen if orange is winning. Now, if the time is less than one, it'll wait one second and broadcast extra time. And then the way this works, it's not uh, orange score is equal to blue score. I made this sprite here. It's not visible right now, but the sprite's actually black. So the way that that works is the sprite, it shows every single time the timer is less than one, but it blends in with everything else. It actually works perfectly. And then when, as soon as the goal is scored, the game ends. So it is sudden death overtime. Speaking of overtime, I can show you that quickly, but I'm not going to wait 300 seconds. We're just going to set it to 10. Now, this is actually a two-player game. The physics are very clunky, as I said, but I'm actually pretty surprised I was able to pull this off. Uh, some of the stuff is just kind of goofy. You know, that's kind of what I was going for. It's pretty easy to pull the ball back down. Yeah, so then this overtime block will show. Sometimes it goes away. Sometimes it doesn't. I don't know if it's actually programmed to go away. Yeah, it is, but it just doesn't go away. And then if you see here, score here, this screen comes up. There are a few bugs, like I can try and get one to work here. If you if you score, and I, like I didn't take out any of the bugs in this game. I was like lazy, didn't want to take out any bugs. Let's just wait till here to score. So now Orange is scored. You'll actually be able to, because it's in mid switch. You'll be able to play on this screen. Everything will show up. I find this really funny. And I just kind of left it up. And it'll, you'll be able to play on this green flag to play again. And the thing is, this keeps looping for some reason when this happens. And then the cars go away, Easter egg's done. But that is basically all to Bounty Ball Car Soccer. If this video gets 10 likes, I will showcase, I will publish it on Scratch. And if you guys did enjoy it, please be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you never miss one of my videos. If you want me to do another Scratch challenge like this, let me know because I really do enjoy doing stuff like this on Scratch. Shout out to Super Creeper who helped me a lot. But that's gonna wrap this video, so thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video.